it can get hairy. And that's where that, remember I told you that whole procuring cost thing you're going to argue? This is where it's going to come in. Let's uh, play that game a little further. Person comes in and says, hey, I want to work with Cameron, but I got a question. Oh, did Cameron show you the house? Have you signed any documentation with Cameron? Well, no. Then forget him. I'll be your agent. And now Cameron goes, well, wait a minute. I showed them that house already, and now you're writing an offer? I want to claim procuring costs. Now we have to go to arbitration and argue it. So that's why I told you, procuring cause is the number one thing you will argue. Just that reason right there. Or it, it could even be different. Let's do it this way. Client comes in and I say, are you working with another agent? And they go, no. And they're lying. That happens. So I take them to this house. I write an offer. Cameron calls me the next day and goes, dude, what the heck are you doing? I showed them that house on Friday. And I go, well, they told me they weren't working with anybody. And I showed them the house on Saturday. Who's the procuring cause? It could be an argument there. You know, protect, probably in that case, it's going to be Cameron. Was there a question, Cameron? Yeah, like... Is there a way to like track like other um, like agents records so you don't you can like prevent that from happening? Or no, is that, that would happening? be a cool idea. That would be a cool idea, but no, there is not. Oh, you cool. literally are held captive to the client being honest and forthright. Okay. You know, they literally could do, and I'm telling you now, I'm not joking. I have been involved in that conversation hundred times in the last 20 years where I get a call from Cameron's managing broker Raymond this is Cameron's broker we got an issue my client my agent showed your client the house yesterday you showed it today what are we going to do all right happens all the time because the client lied or <coughs> perhaps they just didn't understand that Cameron should have got paid. That happens a lot too. Clients don't really know how we get paid. They don't get it. That's probably in this scenario would have been Cameron's fault for not explaining it good enough to the client so that he, so that they would have said yes to me. But that's common, that happens all the time. So I get a call from Cameron's managing broker and typically what happens is depending on who it is and how much I like them and how much they like me, there's all kinds of deals that can be made, all right? And you can make anything as long as it still fits. So I could call, uh, Cameron's managing broker calls me and goes, what are we gonna do? Okay, look, here's what we'll do. I'll go ahead and finish this deal and then I'll pay you a referral for that. Or I'll send them back to you you pay me a referral because I wrote the offer. Or, screw you, um, we'll catch it up on the next one. Or, worst case, you're lying. Let's go to court and determine what the judge has to say who the procuring cause was. It could be any of that range in there. The good thing is, by the time you're a managing broker, most of the time you have come to grips with the fact Hey, I might not like Cameron's managing broker. I'm making this up by the way, but I know that I'm gonna be dealing with them for the next 10 years of my life. Let's not make it adversarial and go, look, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I'll just pay you a referral. Are you cool with that? And he's like, yeah, let's not let it happen again. Sure, whatever, educate your client then or educate your agent better and I'll educate my agent. And when it closes, I'll write you a check. Okay, goodbye. So that happens a lot. And like I said, I've had guys that are like, dude, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'll buy you a box of cigars. Okay, you can do anything you want as long as it's legal, ethical, and, and moral. I can agree to keep the client and pay you. I'll give them back to you, you pay me. I say, screw you, you're lying, go to court. 
whatever you guys want to do. All right. On page 149 is the termination of agency. Over on page 150, on page 150 in your book, I want you to write six words under customer level service. These six words come from a good friend of mine named Dan Miller, who is no longer living. Dan was my instructor and started me as a teacher. He's the one that hired me. He pulled me out and said, oh, you did really well. I never thought about teaching. So I started teaching. So these are Dan's six words. You ready? Do no harm. Do no help. That's how you treat a customer. Do no harm, meaning you can't lie to them, but do no help. Don't help them either. That's customer level service. You still have to exercise reasonable skill and care. You have to be honest in your disclosures to the other side but you don't certainly give them advice, insight, help, any of that. That is what their agent is for. So do no harm, do no help. Now, we are allowed in Indiana to give our opinion. If your client says, what do you think? You should always preface that with, I'm not gonna live here. That's usually what I tell most of my clients. Well, do you think the garage is big enough? Uh, I'm not gonna live here. But you can give your opinion. You are also allowed to give an exaggerated opinion. It is called puffing. Puffing on page 150. For example, you could say, yes, that is a toxic waste dump in the neighborhood, but this house is the best view of the toxic waste dump there is. That's puffing. That's an exaggerated opinion. Yes, all these houses suck, but you've got the least sucky house there is. What you cannot do is commit fraud. You cannot intentionally tell somebody, remember the old, uh, you could cross your fingers behind your back and it didn't count? No, I-69 interstate is not coming through here. If you know that's a lie, that is fraud. You can be held liable for fraud if you flat out lie and you know something's happening and you fail to disclose it, that's fraud. So those two are pretty simple. Here's the one that'll get you. Negligent misrepresentation. This is where you should have known, but you still made a mistake. Suppose you forget to tell the buyer to ask for the lead-based paint form. The judge is going to look at you and go, Jamon, you're licensed, aren't you? You go, well, yes, sir. To go to continuing ed uh, every year, then you should have known to ask for the lead-based paint and you failed to do it. That's negligent on your part. That's a violation. So you've got fraud, it was a blatant lie. Puffing is your opinion. Negligent misrepresentation is where you should have known, but you went ahead and made a mistake anyway. I forgot to tell my client to ask for a home inspection. Dude, that's negligent. I forgot to ask for the seller's disclosure. That's negligent, you should have known that. You're a professional, you're licensed, all right? So all three of those things, you need to understand the separation. Puffing is legal. It's an exaggerated form of the truth. Fraud is illegal. 
negligent misrepresentation is where you should have known, but you still made a mistake. 